ended. Mobile column held up. Enemy using machine guns. Machine guns? They not only had machine guns, Excellency, but they knew how to use them. When our reinforcements came up, they put them out of action like experts. Then vanished over the hills. Might be a surprise, eh, Saunders? Well, not entirely a surprise, Excellency. Captain Carruthers had reported some time ago that there were machine guns in the mountains. Well, I could hardly believe it. However, I was wrong. Carruthers is always reliable. Where is he now? Somewhere on the Doro Pass. Hajis, you come from Mecca? Yes, my son. You have acquired great merit. Would you not acquire more merit by giving food to a poor man? It's written, my son. Work and you'll have your reward. Get away. They stole my mule. Bad men from gentle. They stole my mule. I have nothing. I am hungry. You're a rogue and a vagabond. Ask for working in village. Don't beg. But it's written again. He who feeds the hungry acquires merit. Here, my son. He who is compassionate and merciful will reward you. Get away. Hadji, if you give a loaf of bread to every beggar, you will starve yourself. Eight hours? Eight hours? Eight hours? Be plenty jolly quick. There are numerous travelers. The time is short. Six, seven, seven, eight. Eight hours? I'd rather have walked. Five, four. Cheerful, my friend? It is cheerful to get away from chattering wives. Going north? Yes. Sanders told me to look for you here and take your orders. Watch for caravans on the Doro Pass. Guns? Machine guns. And caravans with ammunition. I have to go to the shard and report to the government. You get your further orders in the usual way. You are a lucky dog, Carruthers. Get back to civilization. Oh, I'm sick of this darn beard. Eight yeah. hours. I really should have walked it. His Excellency wishes you to report personally to him when you come in. Any other news? Tomorrow the young lady is leaving. There's more than one young lady in Pasha. His Excellency's niece, Miss Brooke. His Excellency is giving a party tonight. A farewell party. There's a card for you, sir. The monster comes up to me and says, Boy Holder, you're the only man in the drums I can trust to play the dance orchestra. 
So I'd like you to come along tonight to His Excellency the Governor's Palace and give the officers and the outlighters a treat. Hey, Kincher! Kincher, punk of water! Or I'll come out and flay the lazy eye off your back. And seeing as our His Excellency the Governor represents His Majesty the King, it's the same, you might say, as if I'd been asked to Buckingham Palace. Wait, hold up! Are you smoking? No, sir. Do you remember what I said I'd do to you if I caught you smoking again? Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to do it now. Yes, sir. Bend over. Yes, sir. Bend over. No, I'm off on parade with you. And remember, don't you try on your own syncopation or I'll flay the hide off you. Yes, sir. Better stop it, Sunday, kill Holder. You wait till I get back. <laughs> Boy, Holder. Yes, sir. Now remember, one bar for a fox trot, two bars for a waltz. One tap more, and I play the hide off. Yes, sir. I'm afraid you're going to leave a good many broken hearts behind you, Marjorie. I think they'll soon recover us. Sir, he's here. I've shown him into your study. Oh, good. You'll have to do duty for him for uh, half an hour. All right. Shall I start the band? Will you? I'm claiming this one. All right. So, it's war. Unless we're quick. From China to Afghanistan, there's a movement to get all the little kingdoms into one great confederacy against us. A few fanatical priests dreaming of a holy war. A few fanatical priests don't drill machine gun teams, so or train mountain batteries. Who then? I don't know yet, but it seems to me that we should establish our influence here in Dakota, dead in the center of all these frontier states. Well, it won't be easy, Carruthers. The Khan's an old man. These others, whoever they are, may scare him off. He has a son, sir. The boy we had at the Prince's School at Ajamir. Yes, Prince Azim. The old Khan adores him. He'll do anything to see that he succeeds to the throne. I see. I think he'd be glad of a treaty of protection with us. Well, perhaps you're right. I'll try and get in touch with the Viceroy as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, you'd better run along and play. You play, sir? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Hello, people. Marjorie, your uncle told me to come and play. What kind of games do you like? Patience. I'm rather good at that. Oh. Mm. Hello, Escott. Hello, Carruthers. Uh, good hunting? Yes, yeah, fine, thanks. Well, um, what, going? Uh, yes, uh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. So the mighty hunter returned. What brought you back? No more bears left in India? Only me. Care to dance? Bears do dance, you know. Do they? I thought they hugged. They do both. Try it. Dare I? Take a chance. All right. Why did you go away so suddenly? I had to. Well, couldn't you have written it? No, I couldn't. I don't understand all this. I hate India. You don't know India, Marjorie. Your India, the visitor's India, the land of the Taj Mahal. My India, the frontier. Marjorie, could you give your life to the frontier with me thrown in? No, my darling. But I could give my life to you with the frontier thrown in. Gosh, that's torn it. No, sir. No, Uncle. No, Uncle. You see, I'm staying on. Well, I warned you. He's a gadabout. 
He's no sort of husband for a nice domesticated girl. And she's not a domesticated girl either. She's... Spoiled, vain, arrogant and selfish. She knows. Yes, I know. Well, here's Lark Carruthers. Oh, thank you, sir. My best wishes, my dear. Thank you, darling. But you'd better get married to him right away, because in a few weeks he'd have to go off without you. To, to Kurt, sir? I think so. You ought to head a mission. The English troops are in the past, Your Highness. They are here, oh, Father? Yes, Prince Edwin. Can I go and greet them, Father? Yes, my son. You go and greet Captain Carruthers in my name. Thank you, Father. This is a day of rejoicing for Tacote, Your Highness. It is, Wapada. England has offered us friendship. If England is our friend, we shall have peace. Peace. Yes. 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 Lincoln Hart. You said what? Lincoln Hart in the cot. Poet like you, mate, didn't ought to be playing the drum. You ought to be twanging a blooming harp. There it is, Mr. Coat. Drink, you, eh? Yes, and you wait until you smell it. <laughs> Listen. The sacred drum of Dakota. The, the old Khan wants everyone to know we're welcome guests. Welcome, eh? Hey, come up! Sazim, the son of the Khan. My father has sent me to greet you, but please don't judge the warmth of his welcome by the size of his messenger. But measure it by the breadth of his smile. If we hadn't been shot at, Prince Azim. The dog shall pay for it. Mahmoud! Lelagarao, Nako! Jesus! Lelagarao, the sub Lelagarao! Hello, hello! Take them away and shoot them. I see justice is swift in Tako. Are you satisfied, Captain Crubbell? Order it. I'd like to have a chat with you. Sit down. Come this one. Oh, yes. Don't you think it would be better to find a fellow with a strong arm to give those men five strokes of the whip? But they're dead. Are they? Shut, you heard that. Why did you tell those men to fire on us? Did you want to kill us? No. I only wanted to see if the English are easily frightened. <laughs> Is that what they told you, that the English were easily frightened? No. <laughs> well, who told you then? Everybody in Tokot say so. What else did they say? That we shall play with the English. And that we shall have a fine big war. Yes, you'd like a fine big war, wouldn't you? Of course. But first, we'll give uh, five strokes of the whip to these men. Oh, no. Oh, oh yes, and a couple for you. Oh, no, Captain Crothers. Well, I'll have to tell your father about this little trick of yours. To my father? Yes. Don't tell him, please. 
Well, if I don't tell your father, will you promise me something? Anything. Will you promise always to tell me the truth? Always? That will be very hard. Yes, expect it will. But um, promise to try, will you? Tell the truth? All right, I'll promise. That's fine. But nobody in Tokot ever does. Oh, well, you'll teach them. Come on. The English march down the hill. Your brother the Khan waits for them humbly at his gate. His son goes forth to welcome them. To whom shall he turn for the leader? To me, good Mullah. You are bound hand and foot by the infidel. Not yet. The voice of God cries, burn, kill, and you play with these toys and mats. I can go into war tonight with men. I can send you all into battle, invulnerable against bullets. For four years, I fought with the Turks at Gallipoli and Arabia. Every day, I heard priests make that promise. Yet men died by bullets. That is true. Victories are not gained by an ignorant rabble led by a fanatic mullah. They are won by an army marching to one man's order, fighting to one man's plan. For months I have traveled through Hamra, Motral, Karashan, Yadak, Chiltistan. They are one with us. More and more guns are coming in over the Doro Pass. And men to teach the use of them. Through all these months, what have you done, old Mullah? I have preached a holy war. And I have prepared it. And I say when it begins. You see visions, old Mullah. Can you see into the future? I have but to look into a bowl of clear water. Look into my map and see my dreams spring to life. Now I see blotches and lines. And I see a wave, a wave of men. Lean, hard, hungry, free men from the hills, swooping down on the fat, soft, comfortable slaves of the plains. Their white throats ripe for the knife. A story as old as time. I see a river, the River Jalem. The Jalem, where the old Mughal Empire thrived. I see the mosques and domes rise again. The palaces of Shah Jahan. my arrangements with my brother, the Khan. And Azim, his son? My arrangements will include him, too. I play the drum. Oh, not my drum, you don't. That drum was given me by the Commander-in-Chief of the British Army. The Commander? In-blinking Chief. 
bought out of his own savings and hands it to me with his own hands. So drop it unless you want trouble. I would much rather be friends with you. Oh, so would a lot of people. Are you going to drop them sticks? Say, please, when you speak to me. Look at him. I can see I'm going to put my foot down. Come on, stick him up. I cannot allow it to strike me. I am a prince. Come on, stick him up. Oh. Well, brother, Roger! Leave this to me. Here, take this. Now we are friends, no? What if you put it like that? And you will teach me to play the drum? Please. Please! Oh, you're a sport. Come on. Now, you see, you hold them like this. His Highness Mohammed Khan. Good. Show him in. Hello, Colonel. Hello, Mohammed. Sit down. What's the news? Better than I expected. Good. The Khan has sent me to tell you that he is ready to sign the treaty, in spite of the opposition. The opposition of his brother, Prince Gu? I haven't said that, Carruthers. Are you afraid? No, my friend. But I'm careful. And I would advise you also to be careful. Gul is a madman who dreams high dreams. All right, I'll be careful. And thank you, Mohammed Khan. You've done us a great service. Good afternoon, Captain Curtis. Oh, Prince Azim, what are you doing here? You know, Bill Holder. Oh, uh, yes. I think I have had the pleasure. Captain Curtis. How do you do? I asked Bill to compose me a personal signal on the drum, just as a general of a regiment has. Bill, play for Captain Curtis. Well, go on, Holder. Excellent. Fine bit of work, Holder. I shall always use it on plate or whenever I'm in danger. In danger? Yes, that's right. I'm glad I heard it. Well, we mustn't interrupt your lesson. Uh, goodbye, Prince Adam. Good afternoon, Holder. Oh, what's the matter, Bill? Oh, God, no, no, I've never had such close chef in my life. My government will establish an agency in Turkot with a British resident, and it will protect your country against its enemies. On the other hand, as understood, you will suppress the passage of arms through your state. And there will be a subsidy for me and my son? A large one for yourself and a small one for Prince Azim. Oh, because he is small. Yes, I see. But he will not always be small. And so, Captain Carruthers, the subsidy will grow with him, yes? Inch by inch, Your Highness. And now I must say goodbye. We leave for Bashar today. Goodbye, Captain Mott. Bye, Your Highness. Go ahead, make sure. That's jolly good. Well, so long, chum. I think you look grand. Not so dusty. I say, Bill, one day will you let me put those things on? Just to see? I suppose it will be all right, you being an ally of ours only. Don't you want me to? Sure I do. I was only thinking of regulations. You know anything that's mine's yours. Same here, Bill. You're a toff if you know what I mean. And you are the blinking same, Bill, not to have you, and... <laughs> <laughs>
Tell him. Now. Remember, the boy is in your hands. Make no mistake. to make trouble with our neighbors. Go now, please, and deliver these shoes. And remember, be careful. Don't worry, my father. I'll be careful. Two months at least. <laughs> Come and have your tea. Thank you, Madam. I've got news for you, Tony. Yes, sir? There's been trouble at Dakot. The old Khan's been assassinated. And the boy? Disappeared, probably the same way. Oh, poor little devil. The new Khan, Ghoul, has sent an envoy and has promised to carry out the treaty you signed with his brother. Do you believe that, sir? I have no good reason to disbelieve it. So you ought to go up there as resident. Partly as a reward for your good work, but chiefly because you're the best man for the job. Thank you. But Marjorie, but you'll be the only English woman up there. Well, that's not the first time it's happened in India. 
No, I don't like it. There may be danger. How shall I face other women if I run away from it? I'm very proud of you, my dear. You could have knocked me flat. Both me heart and me drum is the beat when I saw you. But you were pleased, Bill. You bet I was. What are you doing here in that regard? I have sad news, Bill. My father has been killed. Killed? Yes, by my uncle. I am sorry, Azim. But why are you here? I thought if your father died. He tried to kill me, too. So I have to come here with your father. He makes shoes and iron the errands. And you take it like that. It's will of Allah. And you're a blinking marvel, Azim. You found more in religion than I ever did. Wish you could help me. Something the matter, Bill? Well, I'm having trouble with the drum major. The army's all right, but he's a thundering drawback. But about you? You can't go on running errands. You're a prince. Perhaps you can help me, Bill. I will if I can. I want to be a drummer boy in your town regiment. Oh, what is the matter, Bill? But you told me I was all right. As a prince, yes. But as a drummer, you're a non-starter. No good, Bill. You're an amateur, as him. You have to be a professional to understand the horror of that word. But I'll tell you what. Why not go and see Captain Carruthers? He lives in the first posh house down the road. I can't. As long as I'm alive, I'm a danger to my uncle. I've got to hide. And I've got to go. Look after me any time you like, and I'll look out for you. So long, cop. Let me go! Let me go! Captain Carruthers, he's not here. Someone out there is stabbed me. What do you want? That boy is mine. Yes, I saw him run into your house, lady. I take him away. There you are. Mamu, Zarula. I doubt some lint. Let me see. It hurts? I can move my arm. Don't, then. I'll wash some dresses. You won't mind if it hurts just a little more, will you? You're the man of Prince Arthur? Yes. He's safe. Shall we call the police? Then, not here. Why are you staring at me? Am I the first woman you've seen? Why then? You were brave and you are good to me. Wasn't your mother good to you? She died when I was born. Poor little boy. Why did the man try to hurt you? He is one of my enemies. Good evening, Captain Curtis. Prince Azim. This is the son of the Khan of Dakota, darling. How do you do? How do you do? 
You said I was to come to you, Captain Crothers, when I was in danger. I did. And Mrs. Crothers saved my life. Nonsense. All I did was to bandage his arm and remember the little boys are always hungry. Well, sit down and tuck in if you're hungry. I thank you both for what you've done. Now my young master and I must go. There's room in my compound. Wouldn't you be safer there? Knowing you to be our friend, here is the first place our enemies would look. Now we shall have to hide even more carefully than before. And the man that wounded him would be after him again. That man, sir, won't try and hurt him again. Oh, I suppose you were right. Goodbye, Prince Adam. Goodbye, Captain Curtis. Remember, even though I do have to go back amongst your enemies, we're always your friends. Thank you, Captain Crothers. And please forgive my saying it. But in our mountains, you are wise or dead. I beg you to be wise. Thanks. I'll try to be. Remember, we're in a friendly country, and you must treat everybody with respect, especially the women. Do you hear that, Kelly? Yes, Sergeant. And don't forget that the people here have different habits to us. They don't take it friendly if you show them how a man can be knocked out by an uppercut. Get that, Kelly? Yes, Sergeant. And in this part of the country, the ladies have the lovely features veiled, and you have to leave them veiled. Do you follow me, Kelly? Yes, Sergeant. Good. Then stand up! Aye! His Highness the Khan has sent word that he will call on His Excellency at one o'clock. Well, tell His Excellency. As a matter of fact, I heard. <laughs> stand and have a drink. Thank you. Well? Well, a conventional visit of ceremony, that's all. On our first day of arrival... Oh, come. All right, a very friendly gesture, then. But that won't prevent him starting his war and cutting our throats when the time comes. But why should he? If that was his plan, why did he accept the treaty and agree to the establishment of the agency? It's the old story of the mad dreamers of this world who are half empire builders and half gangsters. If they succeed, history books call them great. And if they don't? Another gangster sinks into oblivion. The man paid a great price for his power. Now he wants to enjoy it, not risk it. In any case, in a few minutes, you'll be able to greet him with my usual diplomatic charm. <laughs> Have another drink? No, thanks. Yes, good. Come on! Attention! Are these troops your escort, Captain Carruthers? Or an army of occupation? They are. I promise, Your Highness, that my government will fulfill the treaty to protect your country against its enemies. Now I understand. Would Your Highness do me the honor to inspect the troops? It is a privilege to inspect the forces of the Raj. Abdullah! My wife, Your Highness. Madame. In our country, we have many orchards with beautiful and delicate blossoms. But the most lovely of all is now in the British residence. What a charming speech. Why can't you say things like that, Major? Oh, well, I never could, you know. I think he should learn, don't you, Your Highness? The Western world, Madame, refuses to learn our scant virtues the chief of which is a grateful admiration of beauty. But we might find something in common, Captain Carruthers. A polo match. England against the coat. Well, we're not up to your standard, but we could give you a game. You know, it was in these valleys that the game was first played, darling. Oh, really? One thing that England has learned from us, madame. I've always heard of you as the prince of polo players, Your Highness. Gentlemen, I must leave before our gracious hostess undermines me with her compliments. 
Madame, I kiss your feet. I am your slave. How did you like him, Zorilla? I didn't. He accepted our offer of friendship and the protection of our soldiers, and yet he wasn't pleased when he saw them. Why? There's something brewing over there in the palace. And with your permission, sir, I'd like to find out what it is. How? From inside the palace. Oh, no, Zorilla, too dangerous. If we delay, things may become too dangerous for all of us. I made a few useful friends when we were here before. Let me go, sir. All right, but remember, don't trust anyone. We've both got to be in at the kill together, so take care. Thank you, sir. Greatest mess president I've ever seen. Am I? Why? Port after our first dinner at the agency. It's historic. I feel I ought to make a speech. What about Port? No, sir. About your wife. Here, here. <coughs> no, sir. Mrs. Carruthers, I propose your health and that of all other women who come up with their men to faraway outposts and bring with them the grace and sweetness of the life they've left behind. Mrs. Carruthers. Mrs. Mrs. Carruthers. Mrs. Carruthers. Carruthers. Halt! Who goes there? Friend. Advance, friend, and give the password. Drums. Pass, friend. All's well. Fourteen machine guns, you say? That's what they say, Saab. And while you play polo tomorrow, another convoy will bring ammunition through the Doro Pass. Yes, I see. Did you get into the palace? No, sir. I must make more friends before I can do that. There are still many people who regard Ghul Khan as a usurper and wish that Prince Azim and Wafatar were back in power. All right, Zorona. Thank you. And remember, I told you to be careful. And do you think you can deceive the English? Of course. Do you think you can conquer the English? <laughs> I tell you, the Empire is ready to be carved to pieces. Don't you want to help yourself? I refuse to kill and ravage. I refuse to betray friends. 
And I won't allow them to be slaughtered like cattle. Listen to me, Muhammad Khan. You are free, you and your people, to follow me or not. But if you attempt to tell your English friends about my plan for the Feast of Muharram, you die before you breathe a word. You understand? I shall leave for home after the match. That's you. Yes? When? Midnight, I'll be at the water gate outside the residence. All right, I'll be there. You know, Doctor, it wasn't until yesterday that I realized polo originated in India. Oh, yes. It's an Indian invention, an English sport in an American profession. <laughs> You've got to watch him. Oh, quite right. We have got to watch him. I couldn't take my eyes from your face while you passed your English friend. My English friend? Come with me, Mohammed Khan. I'm going to tell you all my plan. You see, while we were playing polo and you were talking to your friend Carruthers, my last caravan was creeping into Tukot. Look what they brought. Colonel Gregor. At your service, Highness. What did you bring in your last caravan? Six machine guns, 400 rifles, and ammunition, Your Highness. Machine guns to entertain your friends, the English. And a piece of rope for you, you dog. Take him away. Darling, I may have to ask you to leave here tonight. Do you mind dressing again? Please. Fredo. Where are we going? It's not we, my sweet. I've got to stay. But I may have to ask Mohammed Khan to take you to Chilterston. And if I refuse to leave you? Now, don't make it any more difficult for me. It all depends on what Mohammed Khan has to say. But if I ask you to go, I'm afraid you must. No. The best thing you can do to help me is to go. Now, get dressed, will you? Aye, aye. My Jodhpur. Expecting Mohammed Khan, I believe. Your Highness. We arranged that I should come instead. Are you so bitterly disappointed that you will not offer me your hospitality? You know, Your Highness is always welcome. No, no, please be seated. What a peaceful sea. An English island in our alien snows. The fire and the whiskey. His Highness has honored us instead of Mohammed Khan, as he so kindly put it. 
It was bitterly cold waiting for midnight in the water gate to open. Um, a whiskey and soda? Thank you. I wonder if Mohammed Khan would have had one. Still, why not? With his English education and sympathies? Our religion forbids it. But that wouldn't disturb Mohammed Khan. That is, if he were in good health. Why, isn't he well? No. What's happened to him? Perhaps that long gallop knee to knee with His Excellency. Oh, um, perhaps Dr. Murphy could go to him. Dr. Murphy? An unbeliever. When we are ill or in pain, we write a few prayers on a piece of parchment and burn it in the fire. Sometimes it does not succeed. Unfortunately, we die. But uh, your very good health. What's that? The signal. The great feast begins. For five days and nights, the fires will burn, the prayers will rise up. And once again, the great drum will beat on the Tower of Tokot, and the great feast ends. To make this last night memorable in the annals of this great festival, it is my purpose to hold a banquet in my palace, which will be graced by your presence, Captain Carruthers. Lord Barullah, Lord Bar Very good indeed. Thank you, Your Highness. Abdul Fakir. Your Highness. Take the sandbags away and the targets. And put the benches in their place. Yes, Your Highness. Nicolo. Jelly, jelly. Jelly, jelly, Nicolo. The machine gun there. Very good, Your Highness. And send another machine gun up here. At once, Your Highness. Put it here. Now get the sandbag. See those benches, Abdul? Yes, sir. But you don't see what I see. Those benches filled with British troops, Abdul. The troops of His Excellency, Captain Garada. Marjorie, the candles. 
Tony, not you. But darling, of course me. I bring good news. Your Highness, from the court. From the court? Sit down. Now speak. The tribes are gathering at the court for the Feast of Maharat. They're massing for war. Against whom? The English. Is this good news? Yes, it is good news, Your Highness. The signal for the rising will be the massacre of the people of the residency. Captain Crothers? Yes. And his wife? All of them. And why? But they must be killed. The tribesmen and the princes will only rise with ghoul if they see the English are not to be feared. The English here in Peshaw will move into the mountains to avenge their dead. Yes, and the usurper, ghoul, who murdered your father, will be slain. Your Highness will be put on your rightful throne. We've got nothing to do but wait. Until my friends are killed? They are only infidel. And it is the will of Allah. They are my friends. When will the signal be given? On the fifth day of the feast. In seven days, Your Highness. In seven short days, and the throne of Takot is yours. Silence! Wait here. Both of you. As you, what's up? Excitement is before first post. Bill, I must see the governor. Who? His Excellency, the governor. Yeah, what's the matter with you? Sunstroke? You're balmy. Show me the way to the governor. I must see the governor. Well, I might show you the way to, if I'm lucky, to Sergeant Cox. Thanks, Bill. But if you're fooling me, I'm for it. And you say this is the Prince of Tukut? Yes, Sergeant. I must see the governor. Show me the way. You will. The Kentucky is high as Captain Carville. But if you're fooling me, I'm for it, you know. Come on. Let's go. Mr. Vice, the king. Gentlemen, the king emperor. The king emperor. The king emperor. But if you're fooling me, I'm for it. Well, I can try it, but if the beggar's fooling me, I'm for it. Major, the King Emperor. The King Emperor. Swan Chikulawa, he's to rank. Swan Chikamor. Swan Chindri. 
Sludge. All right, Captain. Yes, sir. Now then. The murderer who rules Takot. Who are you talking about? The Khan, my uncle who killed my father. Very well, go on. He is going to kill the British resident. To kill the British resident? Nothing less than that. Well, why should he? To show the peoples of the mountains that the English are not to be feared anymore. He has invited all the rulers to Tokot to see for themselves. He sent word? Yes. Very secretly, I suppose. Very secretly. Did he send word to you too? No. Then how do you know? The people of Tokot are loyal to me. One of my servants came with the news. And if we send troops to Tokot, they will, of course, acclaim you as rightful heir to the throne. If I wanted that, I would have only to wait until they are killed. I came because I want you to save them. But that would be against your interests. So why should you do that? Captain Crothers is my friend. And Mrs. Crothers was very kind to me. Don't you believe me? Do you think I'm a liar? Mrs. Crothers saved my life. I can't allow her to be killed. Mrs. Crothers is very dear to me, too. But you must understand that I can't just take your word. I must have confirmation if we are to send an expensive expedition. It might provoke war. And what if it should prove unnecessary? You'd be for it? Eh? He heard me uh, use the expression, sir. Oh. I'd be for it, my lad. We all should. Up and down the line from the Viceroy to your friend the drummer boy. Mrs. Cutter may be killed if you wait. You'd better stay at the barracks overnight. No. I'll send Colonel Adair with you. And we'll send for you if we need you. Then send somebody to talk to find me. Hey, stop! Come back! Come back! You came on horseback? Yes, Your Highness. I shall take your horse and leave at once. You too, get horses from our friends and follow me. You're not going to Toko, did you tell the government people? Yes, I did. But they didn't believe me. It's all the better. And it is the will of Allah. But don't throw away your own life. Your uncle's got many spies. Yes, and he's a cruel man. And he'll get you and kill you. That's as sure as the sun will rise tomorrow. Stay here and wait. No, I'm going to Tokot. You stay here. We can't allow you to go. Not allow me? When my father was killed, why did you save my life? Well, because, because you're our rightful lord and ruler. If I'm your rightful lord and ruler, obey me. It's all right, Corporal. I must get in touch with the governor at once. What, bad news? Bad news, very bad news from Dakota. The government house. On the fifth day of the great feast, Captain Carruthers is invited to a banquet at the palace of Ghul Khan. The end of the feast will be a signal for the massacre, and the massacre will be a signal for the uprising of all the mountain states. How soon can a mobile column reach Dakota? Four battalions, mountain battery. No snow on the pass now, so if we take that route, we should be there in four days, if we're lucky. And the fifth day of the great feast is only four days off. When can you start? Daybreak, Your Excellency.
he accepted the ghoul's invitation. Well, what could I do? Now, what could I do? Huh? I managed to refuse the invitation for the whole of the detachment, and I hope that the 250 that remain will look after the 50 that go. Well, it's a wise precaution. Of course, if he'd refused his invitation entirely... No, I couldn't do that. No, that'd be an insult. Besides, it'd give him more food for his propaganda. <laughs> Why? He'd be saying next that the English are too terrified even to eat. <laughs> Ah, you know, Carruthers, in the game of international politics, it's the scoundrel who holds all the trumps. Anyhow, you look after Marjorie, will you? Of course, my dear. Thanks. That's all I wanted to see you about. invited to an evening party by the can of Tucott. And you're responsible for the good name of the British Army. Have you got that, Kelly? Yes, sir. Another thing. You won't get any alcoholic liquors. You'll get water, which is good for you. And tea. Tea, green and otherwise. So the first man who says, mine's a double bath, miss, We'll be taken up before the captain and get a double CB. You follow me, Kelly? Yes, Sergeant. We shall be the guests of a Mohammedan prince. And any nosy parkering round the harem doors will be met with severe and painful punishments. Got that, Kelly? Yes, Sergeant. And finale. Whatever entertainments are given to you, you've got to be pleased. Whether it's snakes or stomach waggling, I want to see a look of rapture on your faces. Know what a look of rapture is, Kelly? Like what Gunnar Wilson had when he strained himself with the howitzer. Raid! Raid! Jump! Shot oh, thanks. I think you ought to stay here. I say Escott's too young to take over command. Well, we aren't invited to be killed. Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be the end of an awfully good tie if we were. How's that? Oh, that's fine. No wonder they're going to make you a colonel. If you think this is a trap, why walk into it with your eyes open? Do you remember Sir Louis Cavanari? Yes. He was British resident in Kabul. Yes, when was that? About 60 years ago. Oh, a bit before my time. He was massacred with all his escort, wasn't he? He walked into a trap with his eyes open, and so did Gordon. Yes, but he got out of a good many tight corners before he was cut down at Khartoum. Exactly, and as a result of that, Kitchener conquered the Sudan, and we've had peace there for two generations. A not unusual preliminary to our establishing law and order is the murder of one of our representatives. As one of our representatives, I find you a most exhilarating companion. Do you know any other funny stories? I know a happier example. Do you remember the Chitral campaign in 95? Yes. Sir George Robertson, the British resident, was besieged for months. But he held the residency until the British relief force arrived, and that's why I want you to remain here. Yes. Are you ready? Let's go. I said, are you properly equipped for a ceremonial dinner? Okay. Wait downstairs for me, will you? I must see my wife. Down, down. In a few hours, the feast will be over and everything will be quiet again. But are you quite sure everything will be all right at the palace? Of course. When I accepted the invitation, I made it a condition that the road from the palace should be kept open until I return. And you still don't know what happened to Mohammed Khan? No, but the Khan promised I should see him. When? After the feast? Yes. The sacred drum will sound three times before midnight. And then it'll be all over? Mm-hmm. 
You'll see. Everything will be fine. Yes, I'll see. All right. Good night, darling. Good night. Carry on, Miss Hardin. You know your most important order. Yes, sir. The bugle call. As soon as I hear the bugle, I'm to lead the torch into the courtyard of the palace. Now, keep your eyes open. Yes. Have a good time, sir. All right, thanks. Never do that in front of our English friends. They consider it a most barbarous habit. It's all, Your Highness. We know that in the East, it's considered a gracious tribute to your host, a compliment which marks the end of a perfect entertainment. Not of the entertainment, merely of the dinner. The entertainment is yet to come. <laughs> Servant in the house. What, they put it? I see. It must have been one of them who put the wireless out of order. What? Yes, there'll be an attack tonight, all right. Does Marjorie know? Not yet. When I was in London and Paris, the ballroom dancing always impressed me as something unspeakably vulgar and barbaric. Probably because Your Highness feels that women should never dance with men. Only for men. You think that if they dance together, the man uh, loses a great deal of his dignity. And the woman something of her chastity. We believe in equality of rights. Equality of rights? Have you ever heard of the lamb persuading the tiger to live in peace with him and respect his equality of rights? 
Has the musket equal rights with the machine gun? No, 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 gentlemen, keep your seats. That was only the first stroke of the drum, as you know. It is the last stroke that counts. Pipes, Your Highness, entertaining the entertainer. Shall we go and watch them? Yeah. See what civilization has done for your dancing and your music. Silent, that you'll ask for more. I never want to hear another drum again.
Mohammed Khan. I promised you should see him. Would you like to have a chat with him? I'm afraid you won't find him talkative. Don't cry, Mrs. Crothers. I would gladly have given my life if I could have got here in time to warn Captain Crothers. But I came too late. But we got your signal. If it hadn't been for that, our losses would have been far greater. You risked your life to come here, Prince Asim. You're very brave. And good to me. You helped me when you didn't know who I was. Now, I want to help you, so don't cry. I will save your husband. Believe me, I will save him. You had him tortured. Why didn't you have the decency to kill him? I might need him. You don't kill me because you'll need me, I suppose. What for? For a wooden cage I have. I will put you in the cage, and it will be carried through all the mountain states so that the people may know how the English are to be feared. You're a mad dreamer, but you'll wake up one of these days. Before I do, you will write an order, Carruthers. An order to evacuate the residency. I promise your troops safe conduct. Safe conduct? You swine, you shot at them when they were your guests. Write the order, Carruthers, if you wish to speak again. Call your executioner, do whatever your hellish brain can conceive, but you won't harm anybody over there because... Whisper in my ear, speak up! A report has just come in that the British troops have crossed the border. Give the order! Sound the alarm! Quick! 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 I swear by all that I believe, if those troops ever come up here, I'll have your head thrown in front of their horses' hooves. <laughs> Your 
Abdul will go at once. To the north gate, over the high pass. In two days, we're in Turkestan. Soon, I will be back here, stronger than ever. Take this box. Guard it well. If we have money, we have power. Everything. Always, I win. Now, go. Very well. Mustafa. Take your men and go to the tower. Cut off the heads of the two prisoners, now. troops are leaving Tokot, but I am very happy to know that my best friends are remaining just a little longer. Prince Azim, uh, Your Highness, would you do me the honor of inspecting the troops before they leave? It will be a pleasure, Your Excellency. After you, Mrs. Curtis. 